The patient seen here is prone and the target lumbar anatomy has been identified with a finder needle. 1% lidocaine has already been administered subcutaneously prior to insertion of the 14 gauge 2E needle. An anterior posterior film is shot with craniocaudal angulation to open the space and needle adjustments are subsequently performed to target an open interlaminar space. Key anatomy to identify include the pedicles, spinous processes, lamina, interlaminar spaces, and the needle, which should be coaxial. With the needle correctly oriented in the AP view, a lateral film is then obtained. The needle should be positioned ventral to a hypothetical line connecting the ventral margins of the lamina. This line is known as the ventral interlaminar line. Additional needle advancement and confirmation with fluoroscopy may be needed. Injection of contrast can also be helpful to identify the proper needle location. In this live film, the contrast is observed to spread into the epidural space, suggesting that proper intrathecal access has not been obtained. Tenting of the dura is also prominently displayed here, and in our experience is often seen in the prone position. A helpful maneuver to consider is advancement of the needle with rotational movement, or piercing the dura with a spinal needle through the 14 gauge TUI. Other general maneuvers to increase intrathecal pressure may be indicated. Here you can visualize injection of the contrast as it spreads throughout the intrathecal space, highlighting the subtle outline of the cauda equina nerve roots, which is a separate finding from the contrast layering in the anterior epidural or subdural space from the prior injection. With confirmation of the correct needle location, the lumbar catheter is then carefully inserted five to 10 centimeters into the space. At this point, the patient may experience paresthesias. Direct visualization under fluoroscopy is also an option. The TUI needle is removed over the catheter, ensuring that the catheter position is maintained. Once an attempt is made to advance the catheter, the catheter should never be withdrawn given the risk of shearing the spinal catheter. If a rigid guide wire is used, it should be withdrawn by applying a constant light traction. CSF output is now checked from the catheter. If output is not readily apparent, as in this case, the temporary lure adapter can be inserted to remove any air from the catheter, thereby facilitating gravity-mediated drainage of CSF. With appropriate CSF flow, the yellow male end cap can now be connected. Clear CSF output should again be observed with removal of the yellow cap. The lumbar drain is now dressed.